I guess we have another change of plans. Cooper just gave me a call and said the back axle and the combine snapped in half. Hey everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 22 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're right place. By the way guys, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you. As you can tell, I still got my voice back. It's been about five days now. We're just jockeying equipment around this morning. I'm in the 1981 John Deere 4840 at the moment. I'm bringing this over to the main farm. We're going to start picking some corn here once we get there. We had a little bit of frost this morning, so we weren't able to run right away early in the morning, but sometimes that's how it goes. It'd be real nice if I could maybe see Sounds like dad's having some issues with the dryer. We're kind of wondering if some wrong parts got ordered. So he's trying to get that resolved. And while he's doing that, we're gonna start loading some corn here. And hopefully he can get that figured out today. So that way we can be drying corn. Here we go. Probably put it in gear. The rain we got yesterday didn't really amount to too much. It's just, it made the top of the ground nice and wet. So basically we're just gonna be tracking around a bunch of mud, but we're not really gonna be ripping up any ruts or anything. Look, we're having pizza for lunch again. Cooper was taking a little nap after lunch. Chuck's all giddy up and ready to go, so we're gonna go. Lunch is over. We had pizza again. I think this is like day number six or seven in a row we've had pizza. I'm pretty tired of it. I know, I know, I can't make too many excuses because I could make my own lunch and eat that, but sometimes it's just funner to complain, right? Right now I'm having issues with my Agfinity, which is Ag Leader's remote support Thing on the app so I can view live information of what's going on on the monitor from my phone or dad's phone or Cooper's phone. It's not wanting to map the yields of the corn that I'm harvesting right now so I'm gonna give Pete a little jingle here and then see if he can figure out what's going on because it'd be kind of nice to be able to see that stuff. like an hour period right after lunch where you're going along it's nice and warm in the cab you're comfortable it is really hard to keep your eyes open i'm gonna walk around here do a little bit of checking for some corn on the ground to make sure stuff's still running through the combine okay that way we can get some blood flow pumping to the legs and we'll wake up a little bit it's a big old horse it smells like mountain dew out here i'm not gonna complain not having any corn come through the combine really, just got a little bit of shatter loss going on, but not much I can do there. Good to go. Oh yeah guys, by the way, if you like my sunglasses and want to pick yourself up a pair or a similar pair, if you go to pitvipersunglasses.com, the link's in the description, and you use the code CORNSTARCOAL, you'll get 10% off. I was going along in the field and someone decided to come ride with me, so, I just decided to teach him how to drive the combine so I could take a nap. <laughs> Look who it is. This right here is my girlfriend, Neva. And this is the first time she's ever driven a combine. She's a city girl. And believe it or not, this is her first round and she is killing it right now. She did a turnaround all by herself. She's unloading on the go at the moment. I, I'm impressed. I think she's pretty excited about it. I will tell you this, she drives the combine like she drives her car. Fast. 
How many people can say they've driven a combine before they've driven a lawnmower? Neva's one of them. We had a pretty good day in the field. We combined just over 17,000 bushels of corn and we got about 74 acres done or something like that. So it, it, was, it was a pretty solid day. Started getting dark on us in a hurry and we got the field we were in done. So we're gonna start again tomorrow. We're gonna keep combining some more corn. For being a tractor that's almost 40 years old, you gotta admit, it's a good looking machine. I know it's John Deere, but it's still a nice machine. Just imagine if it was red, it would look even better. Howdy everybody, we got a lot of stuff to do today. We're in the full swing of corn harvest. Corn harvest is something new every day. It's full of a lot of long days, a lot of exciting things. Well, some things not so exciting, but anyway, let's go see what dad's up to. And we have a bunch of stuff here to do in the yard this morning before we get out in the field. So let's get to it. Good morning. Hey, young man. So this morning, me and Cole were just kind of running around. We ran the corn dryer yesterday. We take our corn through the dryer and we take the corn out hot. So it's always spitting out corn. We're running our corn out at 120 degrees. So it's got to go in a bin where we can blow cold air on it for at least four to five hours. And then we'll transfer it to a different bin. Our big bin this morning, we're getting ready to put corn in it from the dryer. It's a 50,000 bushel bin with a false floor. So right now, me and Cole, we're climbing around making sure all the augers are going the right direction. And hopefully in the next 15 minutes, we'll have the dryer started. Dad's got to climb up this ladder to make sure that auger's spinning the right way. Right, Dad? I actually told Cole he could do it this morning. Backwards. Is it really? Okay, let me turn it on. You ready? Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Our belt came off. We've ran into a couple issues so far this morning. First one being we climbed up on top of this auger to make sure the auger was going in the right direction and it was backwards. So we switched around some wires, kicked it on. Oh, wait, the belt popped off the end of the auger. So we climbed up there and realized, oh, we forgot to tighten the motor down. So we tied the motor down, opened the cap, climbed inside, and then remembered, oh yeah, when Daddy Cornstar emptied this bin, he never finished cleaning it out all the way. So we need to clean it out quick. It's always fun climbing in this hole. Uh, ah. This right here is the inside of the 50,000 bushel bin. As you can see, we got a little bit of corn here on the ground, not much, but we need to broom this up, get it out the door. Dad is actually going to get the skid loader right now. That way we can pull it out there and try not to make too big of a mess. It's okay if we do make a big mess though, because we'll just make dad clean it up. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! Yeah, I'm having too much fun in here. Okay, time to sweep. Daylight. This ladder is definitely not OSHA approved. Once this corn gets piled up high enough, it'll hit the bottom of that auger, and then we'll turn that auger on, and then it'll take it up to the ceiling here, and then down the ceiling in the center of that rafter, we have another auger that can take it to the length of the building. I really like watching grain fall. It's really satisfying to me. This auger should be pumping just about 2,000 bushels of corn an hour, so it won't take very long to get this stacked up to here. We got about 10,000 bushels of corn in the bin this is coming out of. Dad's doing a moisture sample out of the dryer real quick just to make sure everything's running how it's supposed to. 
17 and a half, but then we're taking out 125 degree corn, so we'd take out more than two points, so 16, 15 and a half. Not too bad, would you say? Probably just leave her kind of set where we got her. guys let's go hop in the freight liner take that over to the field dad's either gonna take the white volvo or the red volvo I, i'm guessing the red one right now the cooling bin is emptying into the big machine shed once the cooling bin's empty then we'll go back to filling that out of the dryer but while the cooling bin is emptying we fill the big bin and the reason why we switch them like that instead of just filling the big bin first then the little cooling bin we do the little cooling bin first because that can be emptying into the big machine shed then once that's empty we can flip back to fill in that then we can blow air on the big bin otherwise if you get the big bin full right away then you're always waiting for the little bin to empty out and it just puts a big bottleneck on your operation so we just flip between the two bins that way we always have a place we can be putting grain right out of the dryer until the big bin's full anyway but by the time the big bin gets full then we're usually getting pretty close to being done with harvest i guess we have another change of plans cooper just gave me a call and said the back axle on the combine snapped in half so i'm going to shut the semi off and then we're going to hop in the truck and go check it out one really good thing about having a youtube channel is when bad stuff like this happens it makes a decent thumbnail and possibly the title of the video you got to stay positive guys because we all have things in our lives that never go right and that's just the way it goes you gotta roll with it stuff like this happens what's your thoughts dad there's none right now just trying to think where we're gonna get parts oh, just want to be able to combine corn there we go guys might be buying a 9230 before we thought That is not good. Okay. Last night, Nava was driving, so I'm kind of glad this didn't happen to her. Though she might have been scarred for a while. Not much you can do here. Cooper was just turning around. It wasn't anything he did wrong. It was just a weak spot, I guess. On these 2388 series combines like this, that is known to be a spot. This happens on them often. It's not really a matter of if it's gonna happen, it's just when. We have about 3,600 separator hours on this machine, so I'd say it took a lot of abuse over the years. Dad's calling around right now trying to find an axle for this, and then basically we're just gonna jack the back end up, slap a new one on, and hopefully nothing else got too bent under there. It's kinda hard to see right now and everything's all pressed into itself, but we'll get her going. Here's the issue under here. We got the axle just straight up cracked in half. Damage assessing. I've never broke a back axle on a combine before. I know Dad snapped back wheels off before, and we had a front axle break on one one time, but never like this on the back. We located an axle, so we have a two hour drive. Got Grandpa John with me to keep me company. That way I don't fall asleep. He's gonna keep me in line, and Grandpa drove truck for a long time, so he knows how to get around. Well, we're out here with the uh, 2388 with a broken axle. We just used mighty muscles to lift the back end up. Now we're blocking it. Ryan's over there getting blocks. We're going to see what we can do here, guys, ladies. <clears throat> Not the thing that you want to happen on a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday. Ryan says it's a good thing he's here. Lifesaver. Thanks, Ryan. Looks like we found one. This combine yard is ginormous. It goes on for like a quarter of a mile, and I don't know how deep it is. And there's tractors back there. A lot of cool stuff here.
usually. I'm gonna grab the torch. The torch worked. We're not gonna touch that though, that's hot. In case you guys wondered what $1,200 in parts looks like, a thousand for that, 200 for that. We're good to go. Definitely didn't need the next thing on my list to be running out of gas two hours from home. It's like grandpa found a friend. Here we go. Well, we got the axle off the combine. Not a good deal. This is the crack. She's broke, she's bent. We got a new one coming, so hopefully we can get her up and going tomorrow morning. Right here we got our old one. You can see where it cracked. And this is the new one that we just got. It's got a reinforcement brace on the bottom here. This, it needs to be flipped over. But that one's gonna be a lot stronger than this one. 